missing you in all the old familiar places that this heart and mind embraces all day through. One of the most iconic images of World War II is Wait for Me, Daddy, taken by Claude P. Detloff on October 1, 1940. It shows the British Columbia Regiment, the Duke of Connaught's own rifles, marching down 8th Street at Columbia. Five-year-old Warren Bernard, Whitey, reaches for his father Jack's hand as the column of men march to war. The photograph perfectly captured the farewell of so many soldiers and received attention all over the world. Whitey was asked to participate in victory loan drives where he would reenact the photo and then ask for support to help bring his daddy home. Whitey Bernard was not the only one to help out with war bonds. Canada held numerous campaigns for victory bonds, which amounted to over $12 billion in sales. The money was crucial to the war financing, and bond drives, rallies, and competitions were common. Here we see workers at Seagram Distillery displaying a victory loan banner, and a Westminster Shook Mills worker receiving a plaque acknowledging the mill's contribution to the fourth victory loan. Are you saving old newspapers, magazines, paper bags, and boxes? Paper is a vital war material, and there's a serious shortage. Sell your waste paper, or give it to a local charity. Another home front activity was salvage work, where people collected paper, scrap metal, animal bones, and rubber to be reused. Waste paper was needed, because the men who usually cut the timber were instead enlisting in military service. By the end of the war, the government needed 20,000 tons of waste paper per month. Iron and tin were also important, as they could be used to produce tanks, airplane engines, and ships. Westminster industries were busy with manufacturing. Mercer shipyards constructed warships and other naval craft for the British, Russian, and Canadian navies. Heaps Engineering, now owned by the city, set to work creating shell casings and cargo winches. Pacific Veneer and Plywood Company produced materials for military aircrafts such as the Mosquito Airplane. On top of regular life and war work, there were plenty of volunteer efforts for both men and women. One of the more popular ventures was the Westminster House at 131 8th Street. Over the course of the war, thousands of men were stationed in New Westminster, waiting for transfers or for training. The Soroptimus Club created the Westminster House to be a home away from home for these men. The house formerly belonged to the Galbraith family, but by 1939 was city property and about to be demolished. The Soroptimus Club leased it from the city and decorated it with donations from the business community. Many a soldier spent a pleasant evening playing pool or cards or dancing and socializing with local girls. Homefront work kept everyone busy, but the time-honored New Westminster May Day continued on. Along with the traditional dances and athletics, the May Day celebrations also included drills by the local cadets and first aid performances. 
Here we see the 1941 May Queen, Jackie Overend, drive by Queen's Park on a military armored car. The war also produced two Victoria Cross winners for New Westminster, Private Ernest Smokey Smith of the Seaforth Highlanders and Major John Manny of the Westminster Regiment were both awarded this highest military honor. Each viewed the experience with typical Canadian modesty and humility. After the ceremony, Manny said, One thing about getting a Victoria Cross, there's not much chance of having to do it again. Smith was not exactly starstruck by his meeting with the King, saying, Oh well, he was just another fella. Not bad. When peace in Europe was announced, high school students started an impromptu snake parade down Columbia Street. Fears about the war in the Pacific meant the true celebration didn't occur until January 1946, when the Westminster Regiment returned home. They arrived by train to the CPR station and marched to the stadium in Queen's Park to be reunited with their friends and family. So kiss me once and kiss me twice and kiss me again, it's been a long